Okay, uh, dear invited uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. President, and all the honorable uh, people you are coming to uh, this conference. Uh, thank you very much, and I will say, uh, or I want a very uh, pleasant to say, you are welcome for this uh, nice uh, presentation and nice to meet you. And my presentation uh, keynote is already in the issue of an Institute for Cultural Diplomacy International Conference uh, that is held just today, uh, yest yesterday. Uh, it is before yesterday already started and it continues. So the issue is linkage of human interests and cultural diplomacy in the issue of common resources. That is a very short and brief uh, <coughs> sort of uh, uh, points I want to address. And I'm uh, already there. Haimanut uh, Argahain from the Marcos University of Ethiopia, away from uh, uh, 300 kilometers north from Addis, in the northern direction. <coughs> Hopefully, you may uh, just touch the town if you are visiting uh, as a facility, this is uh, historic area in the sort of tourism uh, issues. So that is what uh, the hometown uh, I am already working with is that university. So my uh, very crucial issue is what is the linkage of uh, these human interests and the uh, cultural diplomacy, particularly in the common interests of uh, we all uh, living here in this real world. So a briefing is already uh, uh, focused on these basic resources. These are the, uh, co the resources. Um, many scholars may classify uh, these resources in their own uh, way of understanding or in their way of uh, scholarship or scholarly understanding us. Basically, I classified this from the economic point of view, the natural resource, human resource, uh, capital resource, and the intrinsic resources of human beings are very crucial for everybody in doing uh, his own businesses or his own uh, livelihood styles. So here in the natural uh, resources issue, the land and its own topographies, the water, the minerals, as a whole, the physical environment is included, and the variation exists in, in terms of quantity as well as the type. In the case of human resources, uh, we are just focusing either an individual person or a group of individuals, whether he's a skilled or casual, whether he's local or he's a newcomer from that particular locality. The other one, the capital resources, also another interesting issue. Uh, everybody is striving to it in kind or in cash, in the form of asset or in the form of uh, liquid men, maybe uh, uh, everybody's want. The other four uh, categories, the intrinsic uh, issue of resources, that is the knowledge or the creativity, the language, the culture, the beliefs of every individual. When you come to these natural resources, much of uh, our African small for smallholder farmers, they are facing these kinds of challenges. Uh, there is a diminishing resource base, uh, particularly in terms of uh, soil and water uh, conditions, and weak service delivery, particularly in the input supply, uh, is already the other challenge. They lack access to this low level of technology or even for the higher level of technologies. So accessibility is a problem. And the other one is the available technologies are uh, low in their capacity. Uh, the other one, uh, vulnerability risks to uh, climate changes, lack of awareness, and this governance problems. Uh, they are uh, stick to the cultural practices, particularly based on their beliefs, their values, their cultures. And shortage of these capital resources are already the problem we found out. The other one, the proposed interventions uh, towards those issues are already. The community uh, area-based development approaches are very interesting uh, to come uh, into reality or to be practiced. The other one, improving management and conservation of natural resource issues is already the concern of uh, many of the institutions uh, uh, here and uh, in the world as a whole. Involving the women participation, particularly the gender mainstreaming issue is already the other uh, uh, pertinent intervention area and building this individual and community capacity is also the other uh, crucial point. So here, uh, in, in addition to those intervention points, promoting farmer and community managed organizations like these cooperatives, uh, different kinds of financial institutions are also important. Keeping or providing the freedom of choice for their beliefs, cultures and values is also another a uh, very uh, uh, interesting point of intervention for every nation or every uh, leaders. The other one introduced the package of technologies and new practice to enhance this productivity. This is very uh, uh, a minor example. This overseas development institute working with uh, Ethiopian uh, government, early mature maize variety and improved practices. 
bring some sort of changes, radical changes from 50% up to 95% of uh, yield uh, increment. That means just it is a, a very exemplary uh, for, for us. And the other one fostering development of the other sectors, non-agricultural sectors to trap the huge number of uh, uh, agriculturalists or those uh, rural dwellers to uh, uh, urbanization. This uh, another development issue is very interesting, like industries or uh, like uh, different kinds of institutional developments are very important. While we are coming to the human resource development base, establish goals and anticipate problems in achieving uh, this uh, resource fulfillment is very interesting, evaluating others' behavior and judge whether they are already uh, liking or not, and have a limitless interest and capabilities this is the resources that what human is, that what human we say. Uh, so human, as a human, everybody is valuable or from any of the precious minerals or precious things that we, we want, we need, we, we appreciate. These human beings or the human resources very valuable and very rare even. When we say uh, rare, in the skilled, the needed skilled uh, capability, these resources are very rare. If we want to uh, get some experts uh, in any of the professions, they are very rare, that means, in this world. So we have to give attention for this human development and add this human development or human resources are in a position to add economic value for their organizations they are working with. And they, they are not uh, uh, imitated. Human beings cannot imitate it by any of the technological outputs or results. That means when human is not imitated, the person can design a sort of technology or can develop a sort of uh, new finding, but that person drives the system, not the system that can drive the person. So we have to do attention for this human development is another issue. So how we can uh, give this uh, development of the human being or human cap capital or human resource? In this way, we can develop the human capital. That means we can help uh, to define what type of job that a person is interesting or we have to give some motivations for the person about the benefits, about his pay payments. We have to uh, create some sort of a very interesting way of communicating policies. It may be through papers, it may be from uh, 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 gestures, or it may be from uh, different uh, ways or means. We can uh, give some uh, degrees of uh, policies. We can recommend a payment incremental promotion strategies. We can appraise the performance of a, a person every time, every, every uh, period, periodically. And we can forecast the, uh, the forecast the human resource requirements every time, and we have to provide the trainings uh, uh, very continuously and interview, and uh, select the uh, candidates. The uh, apart from most standardization of these ethical practices for human resource development is just uh, these three things. Just you have to do respect for human rights, human uh, basic human rights that are already uh, designed in the global contexts and make fair and equitable opportunities for everybody and use greatest goods for the greatest numbers of the people. That means when greatest goods, if we have uh, the educational uh, opportunity for uh, everybody, we have to give v v very widely. That means we have not limit, we, have, we should not make it narrow. That means if we have uh, some sort of uh, uh, natural resource basis, we have to also create some opportunities for this to get some benefits from that natural basis uh, that we have in ample. The other one, the capital resource issue is already, this implies the existing valuable goods that we are already using every day, every time, or for a certain period of uh, our lives. So uh, in the case of this uh, resource development scenario, we have uh, already uh, uh, unlimited need or uh, uh, limitless requirements, but limited amount of capitalists. So when we say these assets, or capitalists in terms of the, these assets, industries, and institutions, construction should be going well. That means we have to design how much with uh, how, what level of the human resource requirement is. So uh, regarding this infrastructure development or uh, manufacturing uh, of these institutions, uh, I mean uh, different planters, institutional developments, constructions of these different uh, requirements, we have to do attention uh, from uh, our context, that means. And the other one, this capital resource requirement is various of services that we have to deliver. These are already the, cap the source of the capitals. If these are the sources of our capitals, we have to uh, make some uh, 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 balances, that means. Is the shop 
outweighs the cafeterias or is the cafeterias are necessary for us or is the beauty salons or the recreational areas need attention which one that we have to strive is necessary that means we have to make our uh, policies with this regards the other one uh, the uh, uh, all this all these different assets or capital generations can be held uh, and can be uh, exist or operate very peacefully if there is a sustainable trade system the other one uh, uh, some scholars already justify that about this capital generation the, the capital is uh, uh, the ultimate goal of this capital development is fostering prosperity and we have to reshape ourselves due to this uh, globalization and regionalism that is any economic and political power the center of this uh, 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 globalization and regionalism uh, problems will sh uh, or should be held in a very peaceful manner if and only if there is the uh, successive uh, number of uh, harmonizations of our world that means with such kinds of conference conferences so <coughs> uh, such kinds of scholars already justify that the capital is uh, already bringing about peace the source of uh, peace is capital some scholars say that capital if you have capital we can share this capital with others that means we can exchange our products to other worlds through markets through market structures so this brings about peace and the trade system is already it is a moral issue it is very interesting issue but it is a, the issue of morality so uh, upholding this right uh, uh, peoples or it draws the peoples from uh, any corners of the world this trade system is very interesting so we have to give attention for uh, regional uh, or uh, continental uh, developments of these trade systems so this is very beneficial for everybody uh, that is what these people are already defining so the trade generates uh, this uh, uh, mil military uh, materials or it can on contrary uh, enable those individuals or those nations to purchase these military uh, uh, commodities and if they have military commodities there will be untrust uh, uh, or distrustness if there is distrustness this connection of this distrust leads to their um, to conflicts so this should not be the output of the trade in other words the output of the trade system should be the mutual dependence and the equilibrium should be remain if and only if the peace remains solid and secure that's what the concern so the other, uh, the other, it is already uh, the issue of uh, trade. Uh, these uh, countries in a trade system consider their po potential gains. If there is potential gains, uh, particularly what uh, this person already uh, uh, told that, those low level of economic freedom or low level of economic uh, uh, situation uh, countries or pot potential uh, countries will enable to uh, uh, combat with conflict or uh, come to conflict is 14 times as that of comparing with the high level capitalized countries so the sole uh, important tool of this uh, uh, minimizing the conflict is democracy so when there is democracy uh, in the issue of this capital resource development this is a necessary ingredient together with uh, those uh, trade systems this is what uh, uh, they, these people are already justifying so uh, here trade can also uh, underpin a conflict and perpetuate the violence as a source of funds for example if there are terrorism if there are belligerents if there are rebel groups this can be the source for them not for the nation as a whole not for the citizen of the nation as a whole so in that regard this relationship the relationship between this trade and conflict remains complicated to some extent to some extent so trade alone is not a sufficient tool so what shall i do is already here the necessary uh, varieties of yeah the, the power did not work. okay you did not work okay <coughs> here is a plug or it is no but this is you, not the yeah. use this uh, okay. use this bio to push yeah yeah okay thank, thank you very much thank you very much sorry for the inconveniences uh, here is the alternatives in addition to these trades here uh, in addition to the trade uh, option to keep uh, the world in peace and in a solidarity or in a, sustain, a stable environment the internal stability is necessary the strong institutions de institutional development like this uh, 
uh, different kinds of institutions like this ICD is another uh, important issue to uh, come this world into peace. Like-mindedness of the governments, compatibility market economies, well-defined borders, and mutual interdependencies are very, very interesting. Uh, for example, this mutual interdependency uh, is already reflected as what uh, Dr. Rafael is already presenting in earlier time. We have to make this world, this continental or uh, neighborship in these uh, uh, scenarios by these options is also very uh, important issue uh, that the government has to do. So what is the topic uh, related to this uh, diagram, uh, simple diagram? Uh, my interest is already a linkage of these human interests with that of the cultural diplomacy. So if uh, the human interest, the peace or the conflict environment, as well as the trade in, in, in collaboration with cultural development, uh, to some extent, this is what the picture uh, I already designed. So human interest is very broad. And uppermost, uh, there is production of uh, uh, production of different uh, varieties of uh, commodities in this world. Everybody is striving to produce, and everybody is ultimately uh, need to consume all the resources as uh, I have already classified. Whether it is be it natural, be it a capital, or be it a, a, a human resource, or uh, whether it is an interest, intrinsic or the natural uh, gifts of everybody needed to produce something. So this uh, production comes to the market or the trade. And this uh, trade delivers for the others for the sake of consumption. That means all resources are already used. But the degree or the type may vary. So if this environment is already there, capital accumulation, accumulation is their ultimate goal. If this capital accumulation is there, there is a controversial uh, uh, dispute among the peoples, that means. So if there are uh, problems, the peaceful linkage is already strong, but sometimes the conflicts of interests will arise even from an individual base into a community, into national wide, and into international uh, uh, difficulties. So the cultural diplomacy, the, the important issue that we are already talking about is very interesting. That means uh, the, uh, the cover or the whole uh, ground is already cultural diplomacy. We have to make agreements with each other. We can. Uh, eliminate or resolve the problems. That is what the issue of this diagrammatic expression. So the last point of discussion for this uh, paper is the intrinsic resources. What is this intrinsic resources? So when we say this intrinsic resources, we have to know the innate potentials or the innate knowledge of the people or their entrepreneurial capability from their inborn or uh, their uh, natural gifts or from their uh, 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 experienced uh, experiences from their environment. So the totality of the values, the behaviors, the cultures, the languages, as well as the guiding principles and the traditions of the people has to be due value or get attention uh, every time, that means every time. So different styles of communication uh, may be there, the closing, the eating, or sometimes these uh, intrinsic resources can be gained uh, from experiences, from learning, from education, that means. So from the, ca the family basis, or from the community or from the whole world, we can get these experiences. So we have to give uh, a, a roadmap of giving attention for these peoples. If we give attention for them, we get uh, into uh, involvement or intervention to use them as well as uh, to work for them, to work for them or to work with them, that means with uh, the whole world. So the psychologist says that, says that we are at a large extent culturally programmed. That means people are already culturally programmed at the age of three at the age of our uh, very infant stages, that means uh, the childhood age, ages. So the behavior of that, the attitudinal software or setup of the, 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 the pupil is already programmed at its uh, very infant stages. So no one is culture free, no one is uh, 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 have a dominancy on its cultural rules, or sometimes the culture of the pupil is uh, never written or none written, and we have to uh, interpret these uh, pupils as what they need or at what they have. So the, 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 here is uh, some of the uh, issues that I am asking you, uh, the intrinsic nature, uh, our differences, that means what parts of my life is uh, remain unchanged or what, my life is of, what parts of my life is changed. So in that regard, the friends we have, the social activities, the religious uh, practices that we have already uh, uh, engaged in, the neighborhood, the job and position, the political party we are following, all these things are already the uh, issues of our intrinsic natures, our intrinsic characters that we have already uh, with, with us, that means every time. 
So here, therefore, any divergence of understanding and appreciating the existence and mode of uh, utilization uh, or utilizing using these resources uh, will invite into uh, discomfort, that means to feel discomfort and to attain into confrontation or conflict, conflict. As a result, people and governments should design uh, various kinds of uh, strategies towards a change in the state of development for people and the nation. So among these strategies, uh, this MDG or the Millennium Development uh, uh, Goal is already one and foremost goal that we are already talking and uh, uh, we are already uh, worrying about it, what is its futurity. So uh, uh, we have to just keep in touch with these kinds of cultural diplomatic uh, programs. This is all uh, what I have. Uh, if you have any questions, this is, uh, uh, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for the paper presented. I'm a bancher from Nigeria. I want to bring to you know, the issue of borders. You are emphatic about where defined borders. And if you look at the African situation, there is there's so much of porous borders, so much that conflicts in most countries are caused by citizens of other countries because of the porous nature of borders. And these countries are also having the same investment as in trade. They are trading inter-trade between them. Yet, when in it, in it, there's an internal conflict, we discover that citizens of other countries come to infiltrate some of these countries with their own uh, terrorist uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. And this has been so much of an impediment to trade and investment. You also talk about like-minded governments. And I know that in international trade, there's so much of mutual distrust, but there's an understanding one does not have a like-minded, there's no government that has a similar mind with the other one because of interest. In, the, in trade, everybody has his interest in trade. I don't know how you are going to expand on this. And because you are talking also about mutual interdependence, which should be the ideal thing, but which is not existing because of this conflict of interest. I, I wish you could elaborate more on these issues. Thank you. Uh, from Nigeria is my name. Oh, Nigeria is not part of my name. Rafael Luku is my name uh, <laughs> from Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. Uh, yeah, just to, we're well, not responding, but adding to what he has said, uh, no matter the diverse interest we have, humankind have a, a basic common interest. And that basic common interest is a desire for happiness. So I think that nations should be able to grow their narrow interests and get to a higher level of uh, interest. For instance, Instead of just focusing on the Nigerian interest, we can develop the African interest. Yeah, and uh, if we have an African interest, my submission is that whatever trade or business we are doing, we will key into that bigger interest than limiting it. Now, if we keep the borders, if we maintain the borders, just imagine how much it will cost to move an item from Nigeria to Ghana and to Ethiopia. But if the borders are broken, then there's a free market. And even cost of doing business. So my thinking is that I support the idea of uh, pulling down the borders and uh, let's become one country and then allow freedom of, uh, movement. of movement, freedom of trade and, and all of this. Instead of uh, keeping these small, small borders that keep dragging us uh, 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 behind. If we have common citizens, if the citizens of Niger Republic, for instance, are bad, because they are a threat to Nigeria, Nigeria will take responsibility in investing in making sure the citizens of Niger become good citizens. But if when you limit the interest to your very narrow uh, nation, then the nearby nation, you ignore them, and then they become... So I think, let us say that if we create a bigger platform and look at all of us as one and invest from a holistic perspective, I still believe that uh, we will do better than when we limit... These are interests to small, small regions. Thank you. In responding to our brother's comment about breaking down the borders, ideally, it sounds okay. But because of the various levels of people's understanding, the cultural cohesion, etc. Yes, indeed, in our minds, we can break down the borders. Uh, we can reduce the restrictions at the borders. And I agree with you, yes, indeed, let's think African. But we, have, we are dealing with people's psychology 
as well as some limitations of knowledge. But I think we will deal with that one and that it will, it will come. Because by the time, for instance, what we are even seeing in Nigeria, because of uh, the uh, encroaching uh, desertification from the north, there is so much pressure on Nigeria now. Now we have less space from the southern part of Nigeria. Most people are moving to the center to look for space. People from the north are coming to look for space and even soccer. And it is creating a lot of problems until we ensure that we have balanced development in all the various, uh, maybe, uh, geographical uh, divisions, but have the mind of actually developing ourselves so that we don't become liabilities to other people. And that is maybe what we should look, look, uh, look, at, uh, look at, so that we, when, by the time we decide to break down the borders, we now know our responsibility. We have developed high level of trust that is being resounded all the time, uh, uh, all along, even, even here, even here. But I think it's, we can keep in view, but we have a lot of work to do to ensure, ensure that we do have that sort of philosophical maturity and economic maturity to deal with one another when it comes to trade and diplomatic issues. And uh, I would like to appreciate uh, my mother. That means uh, regarding the first question, border issue, uh, this well-defined border is in the context of uh, the sovereignty, sovereignty issue of the country, a nation. If a nation, even within a nation, if a region, or a particular group of societies have their own limited uh, boundaries, they are uh, very happy enough, that means. If there is no uh, limit or there is no any boundaries for them to enjoy, to work, or to uh, reflect their own cultural values or any of uh, the, the, their rights, this is very uh, conflicting, that means. For ev every time the conflict arises with this issue, the border issue, uh, one may uh, feel he is strong enough and he wants us to uh, uh, defeat the other one. And the other one also shouts, that means, he is becoming to defeat me, just uh, help me, assist me. That is the issue of uh, the border. So if the border is once and uh, for all limited, or if we are no uh, any queries about these border issues, we are free to go through permissions, as already doctor already ask, asked. No problem for the regional integration. No problem for the continental or across the continent. The whole world can integrate each other. Even if thanks to technology today, we can uh, uh, keep in touch with these technologies. That means e-commerce, e e e-trade, or uh, any of the uh, uh, spots of information in the world is reached within a fraction of seconds. That means today. So it is possible to uh, keep in touch or mutual interdependencies for a common uh, benefits for common advantages. But this border issue is very crucial. That is what uh, the issue is already re reflected here. The other one, uh, interest uh, with regard to the trade uh, or the mutual, uh, I mean, uh, the issue of interest. Uh, yes, of course, human beings have a limitless interest. Even if the interest is limited, uh, unlimited, the resources limit itself, that means. Even if uh, the wish is very, very uh, big enough for everybody, if he has an interest, to get that interest, we have to pave the way. We have to show how we can achieve that, uh, uh, th that area. Uh, the, the conflict is already arised if somebody is interested without any kind of effort, that means. Interested to get something without any kind of effort. If there is a lack of effort or his trial, his uh, ability, his capability to be uh, in, into, into practice, the conflict will arise. But to fulfill that interest, we have to give more rooms, more chances, more opportunities. If the opportunities are already designed, a package of through a package, uh, packages of technologies or uh, different al alternatives freely and clearly, and clearly we have addressing or uh, make the everybody, every people, every citizen uh, to think over that fulfillment of his own interests through the uh, designed uh, ample opportunities we can um, make, fulfill his own interests after a certain period of time. That is what the way uh, here. I finalize. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm also from Nigeria. Uh, when you were talking about, I'm, re I'm responding to one of the contributors there, you talked about the mind, I mean the, the borders. Uh, I'm looking at the borders beyond the physical borders. We are more petitioned in our minds than in between our boundaries. Um, 
we've actually initiated initiatives. If you look at the Nigerian foreign policy over the years, it has been purely African-centered. Uh, Nigeria has taken initiatives and have taken leadership in that area right from time, pre-appetite and post-appetite period. Uh, we are more partitioned as Africans based on our strategic national interests that is not actually indigenous to our interests globally. Um, the mind borders, I believe, is the greatest problem of African trade and integration. And the national interest crocs, I mean, that have over the years inhibited African integration, I believe is an extension of the proxy war from the past between the Western and Eastern blocs has trickled down to their colonies. If you look at what's been happening within the West African region, from the Cameroon, I don't know if some members of uh, brothers from other African countries are here, but I believe that we are more partitioned in our minds because of suspicion. We have never as a country been involved in war with any other African country. I'm talking from a Nigerian perspective. But there's that petition between most African brothers of ours across the West, Central, because they, 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 they have a fear of assimilation, and we are going to consume them, not minding the larger market that presents an opportunity for them to actually tap into our resources, both human and natural. <laughs> to the South, we have Benin Republic. To the North, we have Chad, Niger. But the import we have in terms of trade has been more of insurgency over the years. I wish I would have the opportunity to meet civil society organizations or representatives from these countries because we have a case to discuss. Uh, the period of the Cold War have actually affected both trade, political and cultural integration within African subregion over the years. We have studied into this pattern. We've had leaders in the past from Libya, Gaddafi trying to talk about big Africa and as much as we believe in it, the black African subcontinent have been very suspicious about is it an Arab drive, is it a, is it a religious drive, is it an economic drive, is it, is it all about the pride of it. So the situation in Mali and the Central African Republic bring to mind the challenges we face as Africans because we have regional bodies like ECOWAS and the African Union that have not really taken the initiative to take responsibility when the French army went into Mali, I was in England and I was bleeding because I was expecting that the front row of championing the cause should have been from the African Union. We did that as Nigerians in Sierra Leone. We did that as Nigeria in Liberia. But there's that border, my, the mind border between Nigerians and Sierra Leoneans and Liberians. If you ask me any question now and about why did we go to Liberia and Sierra Leone, I can't tell you because we, there's no dividends. We have not been able to quantify our cross-border relationship in the areas that pertain that pertains to trade and cultural integration over the years. Because these are countries that are partitioned by national interests of multinationals ranging from America to Britain to the European Union. The European Union have their own crisis, we know this. But when it comes to trade, they want to blend. Today we have a problem in Ukraine because a section of the country wants them to integrate into the EU. Then the Eastern Bloc are also trying to stop them from going there because of strategic economic interests. But the burden of driving this initiative of cross-border economic integration lies squarely on the feet of regional bodies like ECOWAS, African Union. All we do as third sector organizations and scholars is to provide them the imperative for them to have an understanding of the studies we continue to carry out in our institutions, in our communities. We are actually trying it from a community point of view in our country. And we have a template, we have an initiative, and we are not going to import it. We are going to also inform ICD about what we are doing locally. I'm happy we met in Mark yesterday. And there's a lot going on there. The first impression that I meet I was, a, I, was a, I was the leader of the African Consortium in East Midlands for four years in England. 
And I can assure you as a lead, I didn't find it funny because there was a border of the mind between the Cameroonians, the Ghanaians, and we the Nigerians at that point in time. It's at the, it's at the macro level and at the same time it's, it's actually happening at community level. So we want to speak to our African brothers to say, yes, we are not just that big. We have made a lot of sacrifice, right from the Pretoria regime to our cross-border interests to Benin Republic. But we need some level of appreciation. We have made that move over the years. Nigeria has never been listed as a donor nation based on global economic index 10. As much as we have been contributing to nations without demanding anything in return, I'm speaking as a Nigerian with no apology. And the international community here represented by ICD should acknowledge the fact that we have taken that center road. But other African countries need to cooperate with us because someone has to take the, the lead. We are not against your, your, your sovereign identity and protection of your rights. But you are better off working with us across the aisle. And today I stand here, I'm sitting down here representing my conscience as a Nigerian and recalling the sacrifice we have made in trying to mainstream the interests of Africanism, which, which transcends just culture and, and, and economy. It has to do with identity. That's why we are more in number here today than any other person. I think because of the way we, we go out there, we reach out, we come into Ethiopia, we want to meet people. So people should also reach out to us, ask us questions, not what the mainstream press are telling you about our intentions. In Congo Brazzaville, if there's anybody from Congo here, there's a petition going on. In Sudan, there's a petition going on. Even among the INGs. So we can sit down and continue to make presentation on literature, but on a practical basis, we want to see what's happening mainstream. We were involved in giving countries, even from Ghana to most countries, resources to stabilize the economy. But not even the World Bank or the IMF I acknowledge the contribution of Nigeria to these countries. I stand to be corrected. Africans do not appreciate us. We have done a lot. And we need to begin to sound that. If we went to share a loan to mine gold or diamond, probably they could have respected us more. We lost relatives in Freetown. While the British, Americans and the rest were guiding the diamond wells, the fields, <laughs> but when they came in with their DDR approach, it was we came to fix it, they couldn't. The lives that were lost have not been acknowledged. So thank you very much as we speak trade. I'm talking about my strategic national interest as a country, as a citizen of Nigeria, and I still believe that much can be done if only other African countries will support our interest. And finally, the ECOWAS Economic Bank and other institu financial institutions, Nigeria cannot lead it. As much as we are the greatest contributors to this particular financial institution, because it is democratic, a man from Benin will not vote for me because he need, France needs to call this. I believe that our new interest should go beyond Africa because we have championed this cause pre and post independence. But it has not helped us. Only if those from other countries here will recognize the sacrifice we have made as a nation, we are only in a talk show. Thank you very much.